Sarcosuchus, which translates in Greek into flesh crocodile, is an extinct giant species of crocodiliform. Whilst they certainly resemble crocodiles, they are actually completely different and are not crocodiles at all, and are instead distant relatives of living crocodilian species that lived approximately 122 to 112 million years ago. Sarcosuchus is classified as part of the clade known as Pholidosauridae, which is a group of crocodile-like reptiles, related but outside of the clade Crocodilia, which contains all living crocodiles, alligators, and gyrials. Most members of Pholidosauridae had long slender snouts, and they were all aquatic, inhabiting several different environments. Some species were marine animals, capable of tolerating salt water, while others like Sarcosuchus were exclusively freshwater. Sarcosuchus inhabited South America and Northern Africa in the Sahara Desert over 100 million years ago, when the scorching temperatures and lifeless sand dunes were instead replaced by a tropical climate with lush forests and an abundance of life with a dense network of rivers and streams. This terrifying animal stalked the Earth over 30 million years prior to the Tyrannosaurus Rex and weighed as much as two elephants. The largest modern-day reptile, the saltwater crocodile, was dwarfed by Sarcosuchus. Fully grown individuals are estimated to have reached anywhere between 29 and 31 feet in total length and up to 8 tons in maximum weight. Unlike modern crocodiles, which attain their full adult size in about 10 years, Sarcosuchus seems to have kept growing at a steady rate throughout its lifetime. Paleontologists have determined this by examining the bone cross sections from various fossilized specimens, and their lifespan has been estimated to have been up to 80 years. Sarcosuchus had an extremely long snout, compromising 75% of the length of the skull, which sported jaws lined with over 100 razor-sharp teeth, with 35 on each side of the upper jaw and 31 on each side of the lower jaw. If you were to travel back in time to the Cretaceous period to see one of these magnificent animals, you would immediately notice that the upper jaw was longer than the lower one, creating a gap in between them when they were shut, creating an overbite. It is unknown what advantage this could have given Sarcosuchus in its environment. Its huge size and long jaws have made us wonder for a long time what this animal would have been consuming in the ancient rivers of the Sahara, and the truth is, its exact diet isn't known for certain. It's been speculated though that they would have likely been capable of eating just about anything from large fish, other crocodilians, to even dinosaurs. Its bite force was extremely powerful roughly equivalent to that of T-Rex at about 8 tons, more than enough to crush the bones of ancient dinosaurs and even bite through steel. It would have definitely had to compete for food and territory with other large apex carnivores, such as the semi-aquatic dinosaur known as Spinosaurus, which is the largest predatory animal ever to walk the earth. In fact, these giant predators are most certainly cross paths together, as they are both known to have inhabited the same places. Like Monday Gyrials, Sarcosuchus sported a long thin snout with a bowl like figure at the end known as a bulla. The purpose of the bulla remains baffling to scientists. However, opinions from researchers range from it being an olfactory enhancer to being connected to a vocalization device. Its thin snout, however, closely resembles the snouts of living crocodilians known to eat fish, suggesting that Sarcosuchus may have eaten fish in the ancient rivers of North Africa. This is because elongated jaws are more hydrodynamic and reduce the resistance force that animals experience when swimming through the water. But there are problems with the theory of Sarcosuchus being an exclusive fish eater. One problem is that as Sarcosuchus grew, its snout would gradually broaden. This might suggest that they could have hunted large dinosaurs as adults, but perhaps fish as babies. It's possible that they were ambush predators, like modern day alligators, that would wait by the side or the surface of the water until an unsuspecting prey comes too near. One can imagine a young hadrosaur coming to drink at the water's edge when the giant reptile erupts out of the water to attack and capture the startled animal. When modern day crocodilians attack an animal, they do what is known as a death roll. This is when they spin around in circles while holding onto their prey 
ripping up chunks of flesh and causing major damage. However, it's unlikely that Sarcosuchus would have been able to perform such actions as the structure of the skull was too narrow for that. Just like modern day crocodilians, Sarcosuchus had what is known as osteoderms. The osteoderms on modern crocodilians function as both armor and as heat exchangers, allowing these large reptiles to rapidly raise and lower their temperature. However, in crocodilians, osteoderms aren't present all over the body. This was not the case with Sarcosuchus, and pretty much the entire body was completely covered with osteoderms, except for the end of its tail and the front of its head. So essentially, this terrifying creature was completely covered in armor. This doesn't come without a downside however, it could have potentially had negative effects on Sarcosuchus' overall flexibility. They mainly lived in large river systems that would have flowed across what is now the continents of Africa and South America. Very little information is known about their social behavior as of now, but like modern crocodiles, these reptiles probably were solitary. Although sometimes they may have worked together while hunting like living crocodilians and might have formed large congregations in the areas with abundance of prey. But as mighty and large as Sarcosuchus was, all that remains of these giant reptiles are their fragmented fossils scattered around the world. Which begs the question, why did Sarcosuchus go extinct? And the truth is, like many things about this animal, is we don't really know. What we do know is that they became extinct around 110 million years ago. Scientists suspect they might have died out due to climate change and a loss of habitat. However, the jury is still out on what actually killed Sarcosuchus. Thanks for watching this video and thank you so much for 500 subscribers. You guys are amazing.